Hi, today I want to talk about some measurements I make relating to impingement and version abnormalities about the hip and knees. Now, this topic I think gives a little bit of trouble for radiologists and trainees because it involves addition, subtraction, uh, understanding the 3D orientation of the hip and the acetabulum, but I think if we approach it in a systematic manner, then we can have a better grasp of exactly what we're measuring and what we're talking about. I'm going to simply concentrate on how to make the measurements, why we make the measurements, where we do make them, and not so much about the clinical implications. Uh, the numbers that we get, I typically report them and I have a conversation with the orthopedic surgeon about what it may mean. It's a data point in their evaluation of the patient. They take their clinical information and history into account and the numbers that we generate. So again, concentrating on exactly how to make the measurements as opposed to the significance of the numbers. Of course, I will give my opinion about what some of these numbers mean and give you a range of abnormal and normal. But remember, these are numbers that are established at your institution by your orthopedic surgeons and it may vary a little bit depending on where you are. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here on the left, we have an axial set of images going from the iliac crest down to the femoral condyles. On the right, we have coronal reconstructions from that original data set. And the first thing I wanna show you how to measure is the acetabular version. Let's take uh, the one side, let's take the right side, for example. You can see as I scroll up and down on the left images, uh, it tells you on the right exactly where we are according to the red bar. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the mid aspect of the femoral head. This is, looks about right, maybe, maybe somewhere about here. And you notice that the patient isn't completely flat. Uh, so it's not completely flat to the table. So we have to take that into account when we make our measurement. Basically, it depends on what packs you have, what tools you have, but this packs that I use, it's called Infinite and the tool I use is this right here. It takes, I'm going to make a line picking a similar location on one side to the other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw what I think is a perpendicular and then I can adjust that later and I'll tell you why I'm doing that. I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a line from the anterior margin of the acetabulum here to the posterior margin of the acetabulum right there. Similarly on the other side, anterior aspect of that acetabulum to the posterior aspect of the acetabulum. And I'm going to right click and it generates several numbers here for you. This tells me that the angle between one and two is 89. Well, I want that number to be 90. So I'm gonna adjust that until I get that value to be 90 because now I know I can be uh, exactly perpendicular. And the angle I wanna see is the angle between three and two and four and two. So this isn't, three and two looks good, but I don't want three and four, I want four and two. So I right click on this and I say, display angle information and I want two and four. So I want this one. Uh, I don't necessarily need three and four because three is, is at this angle here between those two lines, I don't really need that. I'm gonna say, get rid of that. So now what do these numbers tell us? Let me just move this a little bit so you can see it better. So the angle between one and two is 90 degrees. And the angle between line three and line two is about 25 degrees. And the angle between line four and line two is 28 degrees, okay? So these two values, 25 and 28, tell you what the acetabular version angle is. The accepted normal values for the acetabular version angle is a little different based on the status of the triradiate cartilage. If the triradiate cartilage is still open, the quoted value is about 14 degrees plus or minus four degrees. Now, if that triradiate cartilage is closed, the accepted value is about 19 degrees plus or minus four degrees. It means that if the value that you measure is smaller than, I, than the numbers I just quoted, then you probably have acetabular retroversion, which is the abnormal state. Now let's go on to make measurements for femoral version. For that, I'm gonna to have to look at the level of the femoral neck and then at the level of the femoral condyles down by the knee. I'm gonna make measurements just on the right side for the sake of brevity. 
Let's move down to the neck, and this is about the neck area. And for this particular measurement, you don't really have to compensate for the fact that the patient is not lying completely horizontally on the table because this is acquired as a single scan from the iliac crest down to the femoral condyle, and the level of tilt that's present at the pelvis is assumed to be about the same as that's at the femoral condyle. So when you make those measurements, they sort of cancel out each other. So let's go ahead and make those measurements now. I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to make a horizontal line as best I can, get rid of some of the jaggies. That looks pretty good. And then one along the axis of the femoral neck. This looks about right. And then the measurement I get here is 15 degrees. So now let's go to the level of the femoral condyles by the knee. Okay, and here we are by the femoral condyles of the knee. So again, we're concentrating just on the right side. Again, I'm going to make that horizontal line and that looks pretty good. And the line along the back of the femoral condyles on the right looks pretty good and I get about 22 degrees. So now here comes a little bit of confusion. Now do you add those numbers? Do you subtract those numbers? What do you do? I think of it in a very simple way. I don't really even think about adding and subtracting at this point. I just say what do I need to do to that knee such that the patella which is kind of like this, is facing completely anteriorly. What do I have to do to that knee? What I have to do to that knee is I have to rotate it this way. Let me just give you an example. I have to take the knee and I have to rotate it this way, don't I? If I do that, it makes these femoral condyles completely flat, parallel to the floor. If I do that, this is a counterclockwise motion. Okay, so counterclockwise motion, how much? 20, 22 degrees. Now if you go back to the top here, we know this angle is 15 degrees. If we rotated that knee 22 degrees counterclockwise, was like this, right? So that's 22 degrees. So it makes this angle also rotate this way by 22 degrees. So it's going to make this angle with respect to the horizon larger. How much larger? 15 degrees plus 22 degrees larger. So it's 22 plus 15, 7, 3. So we have a right-sided antiversion of 37 degrees. So the normal antiversion is between 30 and 40 degrees at birth, but it becomes about 15 degrees as you get to adulthood. So this 37 degrees for a 19 year old is definitely abnormal. And similarly, you're probably gonna get something similar on the left hand side. So there is severe antiversion of the femur. Now let's move on to measuring the femoroacetabular alpha angle. Before we actually make the femoroacetabular alpha angle measurements, I wanna show you a little bit of 3D anatomy to give you an idea of exactly where we're making that measurement and why we're making it. So here's a, 3D model of the bones. I'm going to show you just the pelvis and the femur. So let me go here. I'm going to concentrate on the left lower limb and I'm going to zoom up just a bit to give you a little better anatomy here, detail. I'm going to switch it out. So we have, of course, the left hemipelvis. Here is the femur and I'm going to make a cut right through the femoral neck right over here. And I'm going to use this tool cut like that maybe I'm going to cut on this side okay let's get rid of that so at this point here is the femoral neck that has been cut that looks pretty good I'm going to try to move it up here a little bit center it zoom up um, okay so here's the frontal projection and here is the lateral projection so when we make these alpha angle measurements, we're looking right down the barrel of that femoral neck like this. Okay, let's go ahead and make our clock face measurements here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw what's typically the clock face that we see. So there's a vertical line, here's a horizontal line, okay? And at this point, the superior or the lateral aspect here, that's always the 12 o'clock position. So I'm going to say that's 12 o'clock. 
the anterior is always the three o'clock position. Now, if we sub subdivide this further, we get, so this is probably about one o'clock and this is probably about two o'clock, right? So this is one, two, and here's three, okay? So let's delete all that and then move this a little further along like this. So in this projection, how would that look? So if we were to draw our line again, this would be the 12 o'clock position. And this here anteriorly would be the three o'clock position. So 12 here, three o'clock over here. Uh, if we just go ahead and draw our little other lines, right? So 12 o'clock is a superior or lateral, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Three o'clock is always anterior. So that's how the clock face is generated. Now let's get back to our CT. Okay, so let's bring up the radial images. I'm gonna bring it up here first, the scout image, radial left. And I'm gonna bring it up again on this side, radial left. Okay, so this basically is a view down that barrel of that femoral neck, such that anterior is a three o'clock position and lateral or superior is our 12 o'clock position. So here I have brought up the lateral side already. I'm gonna just spin this and give you an idea of what a proper reconstruction looks like. As you're rotating through 360 degrees of that femoral neck, you should see a nice elongated femoral neck on every single image. That means the reconstruction was done properly. So this is anterior, so that's going to be our three o'clock position. And if we go all the way this way towards the lateral aspect, that is going to be our 12 o'clock position. So let me make a measurement here at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, the tool I use is this little ellipse tool or circle tool. And I just make a best fit circle around that femoral head like so. And that looks pretty good. And then basically you see a little plus sign over there. I'm going to draw an angle that goes through the long axis of the femoral neck and where this circle deviates from the femoral head. So where the femoral head and neck come, where the neck sort of goes away from the femoral head. So let me show you that. I'm gonna take this tool, measure 2D, and it depends on what packs you have. You may have other tools, but this is how I do it on my packs. I'm gonna go ahead and make that, sort of bisects that femoral neck and then goes probably right about here. That's about 55 degrees. So at, if you notice at the 12 o'clock position, the lateral position or the superior position, it is 55 degrees. Now, as I go down the thing, so each six increments is one clock face. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the one o'clock position. I would do something similar over here. Uh, take that same tool make the measurement, best fit circle around that head, something like that, and then make the measurement of the angle, the femoral acetabular alpha angle. So bisecting that neck as best we can at the deviation, 58 degrees. So at the two o'clock position is about here. Again, take that measurement, best fit circle that you can, approximating the femoral head. And then let's go ahead and make our measurement, bisecting the femoral neck as best we can. And probably about here. And then at the six, sorry, and at the anterior aspect, that's a three o'clock position. We're gonna go at one more measurement something like that. And finally, our alpha angle looks like this. And here's where it deviates from the circle. And that's about 57 degrees. So what we report is the alpha angle at 
the 12 o'clock, the 1 o'clock, the 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock positions. So here, at the 3 o'clock position, it measures 57 degrees. Uh, at the uh, 2 o'clock, it's 64 degrees. At the 1 o'clock, it's 58 degrees. And at the 12 o'clock position, it's 55 degrees. So what are the normal values? That also is a little different on the institution. Um, I was told a range between 55 and 60 degrees is normal, but again, that's a conversation you have with your orthopedic surgeon and they sort of decide what the abnormal value is. I think one of these values, particularly the one that showed uh, 64 degrees, I think it's clearly uh, abnormal because, and you can actually see the shape, it's no longer spherical, right? That, that femoral head, uh, that there's a little bump here uh, at the femoral head neck junction. So that suggests to me that there's some type of femoral acetabular impingement going on, the CAM type. So those are the measurements that we're making. We're making acetabular version measurements, the uh, femoral antiversion measurements, and the femoral acetabular alpha ankle measurements. So I hope this has helped you out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. If you like this video, uh, consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. I try to put up a video every so often about pediatric radiology topics that may be a little bit difficult or interesting. Uh, they range from basic to advanced. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time.